In this video, we're going to take an updated look at the Fusion 360 form tool called Match based on the January 2022 update. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I wanted to take a quick updated look at the match tool in the Forms contextual workspace. And the reason I wanted to do this is because the January 2022 update to Fusion 360 added in things like the plastic or the product design extension, which has some cool features that allow us to do things like create geometric patterns, and we've got lattice options, but tucked into the form tools without having to purchase an extension, they added an associative option between one of the tools we've already looked at. And I want to explain what that is and what that really means for our designs. So the first thing I want to do to get started is I'm going to create a new sketch and I'm just going to select the front plane. I'm not going to spend a ton of time creating some big sketch, so I'm just going to use the slot tool and select center point slot. And we're going to go from here out to the left and we're just going to increase its size. Then we'll use a D on the keyboard to just add a few dimensions. Note that it doesn't have to be fully dimensioned, but in this example, it'll help us understand it a little bit better. Next, I'm gonna create a new form body. I'm gonna create a cylinder using the same front plane and just go ahead and create a cylinder. It doesn't matter the size or the divisions, but in this case, I'm gonna change it to 16 for the diameter face and say, okay. We're gonna to go to Modify Edit Form, make sure I've got the body option selected and just pull it back away from our sketch and say, okay. Now here's where the magic in the update happens. We're gonna go down to our Match tool. Now remember the difference between Pull and Match is that Pull is looking at taking vertices on our T-spline and pushing them to a face, a surface, or a mesh. The Match tool is actually looking at taking the edge so you'll notice that this associative checkbox now appears. We want to make sure that we have that checked. We're going to double click the open edge for our T-spline edge, and we're going to select our sketch for the match edge. I'm going to make sure that my spacing is uniform and notice that it's connected because I selected a sketch and not the edge of a surface. So we're going to say, okay, and then we're going to finish the form. We've now converted this to a surface. It's a B-rep. And if we go into our sketch, right click and show our dimensions, if we make any adjustments to here, so for example, make this 100 millimeters, notice that not only does our form body update, but the converted B-Rep updates also. If we increase the radius value, let's make it 50 millimeters. Again, you can see that it updated. Is this gonna work every time for every sketch? No. You have to be careful with what you're driving in terms of the shape, the number of divisions of the form body, and ultimately the sketch or the edge that you're using to control it. I do wanna take another look at this. Let's hide this body. Let's go to our surface tools and let's extrude this. So I'm gonna bring this out and I also wanna add some taper to it. Let's go a little bit extreme and let's put 10 degrees taper and say okay and make sure that that sketch is hidden. Also notice that Create Form now shows up on the Surface Tool tab, which can help us when we're just getting into the form environment. We're gonna, once again, create another cylinder. We're going to just simply move it out of the way. And then we're gonna use that Match tool again. This time, again, associative, but we wanna use Match on the edge of our surface. Notice that I didn't increase this to 16, so there is a bit of deviation between the shape here. We can go back and add more edges if we want, but the main thing I wanna show is now we have tangency or curvature control based on our surface. So I'm gonna say, okay, finish the form, which converts it to a B-rep, and again, the number of divisions is going to matter on that T-spline body, because otherwise you're not gonna be able to match the shape perfectly. However, once again, we can modify our sketch. Let's go ahead and increase this to 75, and let's reduce this down to 100, get it closer to being a circle, and you can see that we've already gotten a closer match. Let's go ahead and make this 75, and you can see here, once again, everything is updating. And this is the power of that associative option, because now we can create some defining surfaces or solid bodies, help drive the direction for things like draft angle, and then we can use the associative option to make sure that we have those controlling sketches that can help us define them downstream. 
that was really one of the key missing pieces from using Fusion 360 as a true product design option when creating these form bodies. But now that we have this option, it does allow us to really focus on creating objects with the applicable draft amount or making sure that we can control the interface with other potentially parametrically created bodies. So at this stage, make sure that you play around with this new option. It is something that is going to change the way that we can use forms. We can now effectively interact with these surface sol or solid bodies or even sketch curves and maintain that link. If you have any questions about this update or any of the other new updates, uh, please leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.